Helldivers, today we're taking on the Terminid, the grotesque and vile bugs that have consumed one front of the Galactic War to defend Super Earth. Today, not only are we breaking down each enemy you'll encounter, but also sharing the best strategies for squashing these creepy crawlers in the name of glorious democracy. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and here is our ultimate guide to defeating the Terminid. First on our list of Terminid enemies are the Scavengers. These orange specks of annoyance are the most basic Terminid enemy that really don't pose much of a threat to players. They're unarmored and usually appear in swarms alongside other Terminid foes, but are surprisingly quick given how unimposing they are. Scavengers will constantly pursue you as their only ability is a simple melee attack, but don't let that fool you. These can kill you in less than a dozen hits. Scavengers have the ability to signal a bug breach, which as you most likely know, calls in a wave of terminated enemies, so kill them before that happens. Luckily, scavengers can be killed with one or two shots from any basic weapon in the game, as they're unarmored and squishy as all heck. We give the scavenger a 1 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index, which we use to determine the lethality of an enemy to the player. Next on the list are the Bile Spitters. These are roughly the same size as scavengers, but are neon green. They move slower than the scavenger, but have the ability to spit globs of poison bile at the player from a short distance away. It doesn't take a lot of bile spitters to deal lethal damage, so just a few can easily overwhelm and kill you. These enemies also have the ability to call in reinforcements with a bug breach, so while not outright deadly, they certainly can be the reason for a wipe. Luckily, they're unarmored and can be killed with one or two shots from any basic weapon in the game. We give the scavengers a 1 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. While smaller in statue than the previous two enemies, Pouncers are small white terminids that will quite literally leap into the air and land right in front of the player. This isn't always easy to deal with as that verticality requires you to change your sight line, which means taking your eyes off of other enemies. But if you ignore Pouncers, you'll end up getting swarmed. The only saving grace here is that these bugs are unarmored and will die with one or two well-placed shots from any basic weapon. Pouncers can also call for reinforcements and open bug breaches. All in all, this enemy is a step up from the previous two, which is why it gets a 2 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Moving up the bug food chain is the Warrior, which is a medium class bug and the first real threat in the Terminid army. These unarmored enemies are a bit more hardy than the previous three we've talked about, and that's partially why they're more deadly. While relatively slow moving, these bugs do tend to get faster and more aggressive the closer they are to the player. This is another swarm enemy and often come in packs, so in combination with the other bugs, they can mount some serious pressure. They are relatively easy to kill, and there's two real ways to go about this. Shooting them in the head requires less ammunition, but once the head is removed, they'll still continue moving and attacking for a few seconds. You could also shoot out the front legs, which will instantly kill them, but it does require a few more rounds from a weapon. Ideally, we go for the head with a little distance between us and the bug. The Warrior does also have the ability to call in a bug breach. Warriors get a 3 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Now before we go any further, let's talk about the difference between ballistic and explosive weapons, because Helldivers 2 doesn't do a great job of explaining this. Regular ballistic weapons deal 10% damage to all non-weak spots. When hitting a weak spot with a ballistic weapon, it deals slightly more than 100% damage. Explosive weapons, on the other hand, those such as the Dominator from the Premium Progression Path, deal damage in a slightly different way. These deal 100% damage to all non-weak spots, and significantly more than 100% to all weak spots. A small note that the Liberator Explosive is a ballistic weapon, and does not deal explosive damage as just described. It does feature a small AoE explosion upon impact, but the two are distinctly different. Now that you understand the difference between ballistic and explosive weapons, let's get back to confronting our terminated foes. Next up, we have the Nursing Spewers, grotesque, bulbous bugs that lumber towards the player and then, once in range, spew bile in their direction. These enemies are impossible to miss as they are amongst the largest of the terminated enemies and have a distinct orange and yellow coloring. They are cousins to another enemy, the Bile Spewer, and luckily, these are the less deadly of the two. The Nursing Spewer's ranged attack is less accurate, less deadly, and lasts for a shorter duration, but that doesn't mean they're not lethal if handled incorrectly. In order to avoid the attack, you need to move perpendicular to the enemy's attack. That means running or diving to the left or right of the projectile. This will almost always help you successfully evade taking damage. You might also think that killing a Nursing Spewer is as simple as shooting its brightly colored abdomen, but that's actually the slower way to kill it. 
The enemy's weak spot is actually its head, and it'll die in just a few shots if you're accurate. The only advantage to killing the enemy by shooting the body is that it'll explode, dealing some AoE damage to enemies nearby. As far as the Nursing Spewer goes, these enemies are a solid 4 out of 10 on the Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Our first Elite-esque enemy, the Hive Guard, is a more imposing melee bug with armor plates on its head and front two legs. When shot, these big boys will hunker down resisting all forms of small arms fire. In large numbers, they can create a shield wall effect protecting other terminated enemies that are behind them, and as you can imagine, that is a big concern. To effectively kill a Hive Guard, you need to shoot at the area between their legs and head, essentially their neck. This will stun lock them and prevent them from hunkering down. If they do go into defensive mode, quickly circle around them and target their fleshy bodies. Some people might say that expendable anti-tank rockets or even a railgun is necessary for defeating these foes, and while good, we believe that something much more accessible, the machine gun, fits the bill. This is a highly overlooked early game weapon that can easily tear through Hive Guard armor and has the added value of providing immense crowd control options against most enemies in the Terminid Swarm. Hive Guards can activate a bug breach, and all of this combined gives it a 4 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Take the warrior we talked about before and amp up everything about it. That's our next enemy, the Brood Commander. These bugs are the elite form of the warrior and are faster, tankier, and more lethal in every way. These spawn sporadically on lower difficulties, but are quite common the harder missions you drop into. The biggest threat they pose is aggression, as they constantly will run at you, putting immense pressure on the team. Like the warrior, you can either target the head or legs, but if you destroy the head, the brood commander will continue fighting for far longer than the headless warrior will. In this case, shooting out the legs is your best bet, as these enemies need to be prioritized or you'll quickly get overwhelmed. Explosives, autocannons, grenade launchers, don't feel bad about using your resources to kill these, because they are deadly and need to be dealt with quickly. To add insult to injury, brood commanders can also activate a bug breach. Brood Commanders get a solid 5 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Ah yes, the awful cousin of the Nursing Spewer, the Bile Spewer. These massive green bugs are almost identical to their orange cousin, albeit more deadly with improved attack tracking, attack duration, and damage. But there's one specific thing that sets it apart. The Bile Spewer in the harder difficulties can turn into a long-range artillery, shooting out a massive blast of green goo that will almost always one-shot a Helldiver. Trying to target these bugs in the backfield with a sea of other enemies between you and them makes Bile Spewers straight up deadly, and always an enemy you need to prioritize above almost everything else. To kill a Bile Spewer, you want to approach it the same way as a Nursing Spewer. Shoot their heads, but remember, if they're surrounded by other enemies, you can opt to attack their body, forcing them to explode, dealing AoE damage to the surrounding foes. Bile Spewers get a 6 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. Easily one of our most despised enemies on this list, the Hunter is the mature version of the Pouncer, and man did Helldivers 2 really code these buggers to be an absolute menace. Hunters are agile, fast, and aggressive, and will intentionally try to flank around you, spreading out the horde in a way that can easily become overwhelming. They'll also actively dodge your attacks, which is unique in the sense that they're one of the only enemies in the game to do that. To layer onto this, their attacks can also slow the player, which, when you think about it, is easily one of the most detrimental things that can happen to a Helldiver when trying to deal with an army of encroaching enemies. You might be able to survive one hit from a lone hunter, but when combined with any other amount of Terminids, their lethality is unrivaled. Here's the one saving grace. Hunters are very fragile, and just one or two shots from any ballistic weapon will kill them. A headshot is almost a guaranteed kill, but again, they dodge attacks, so accuracy is a big factor here. You might have to waste a few extra rounds to hit your mark, but it's well worth making sure any hunters are disposed of quickly. Hunters get a 7 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. If you've encountered stalkers before, then you know just how big of a threat they really are. These camouflaged enemies spawn continuously from stalker nests, which are often excluded from hotspots on your minimap, making it much harder to find their spawn location. Stalkers move around two times faster than hunters and are immensely more powerful and feature that active camouflage I mentioned before, which cloaks the stalker so that they only appear as slight silhouettes in the distance. Stalkers have the ability to pull you in from a short distance away and will often propel you away with their powerful attacks, which can completely disrupt your team's positioning. When you see a stalker, kill a stalker. That's the rule, and since they have no armor, you really just need to fill them with lead. 
The goal is to make sure these never get in melee range because once they do, you'll be diving constantly to try and avoid its attacks. Truthfully, this is an X-Factor enemy that can't be ignored or you will wipe, and since you can't mark stalkers while they're cloaked, it's crucial that you communicate the positioning with your team. Once you know that stalkers are on the map, your number one goal should be to wipe out the nest as quickly as possible. Track where they're engaging from and then move in that direction. Eventually, you'll find the nest, and once you eradicate it, they'll become a non-factor. It's the only enemy on the Terminid side that you can outright stop the spawn of. Stalkers get an 8 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. The last two enemies on the Terminid side need no introduction, as they're the two most deadly bugs currently in the game. The Charger is the tank and heavy hitter of the Terminid army and will constantly charge at you and your team, attempting to trample anyone it hits. Prior to late game builds, your options to take out chargers are limited, and it will really come down to you avoiding the charge by diving to the side last minute and then sinking your entire magazine into the charger's exposed backside. This is not an ideal situation, but it does get a little easier once you have things like grenade launchers, auto cannons, or expendable anti-tank launchers, as they'll deal much higher damage to the enemy. The backside of the charger is not a weak spot, so your ballistic weapons will only deal 10% of their damage which is why taking them down early on in progression can be a challenge. One thing to note if you're attacking the abdomen, once you see it pop and start to bleed, the charger will begin to limp, and it's effectively crippled at this point, and you can move to another target as it's no longer able to charge and will eventually bleed out. Once you have access to weapons like the recoilless rifle and the railgun, taking out chargers is a bit easier. With a well-placed shot or two from any of those weapons, you can knock the armor off any of the legs of the charger, exposing its true weak spot. Once the plating is gone, a few shots from any weapon will kill this massive bug. You might even get lucky and kill it in the process of knocking off the armor with the right weapon. The railgun can also stagger the charger if you hit it in the head. It's not a foolproof solution, but it does buy you some valuable time. Other options like the Auto Cannon Sentry will work so long as you keep them protected. Chargers will aggro any turret on the ground and will kill them quickly, so you have to be strategic about their placement. You can also use other stratagems like Orbitals and Eagle Strikes, but those are best saved for the last threat on our list. The Charger gets a well-deserved 9 out of 10 on the Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. We've arrived at our final Terminid on the list, for now. The Bile Titan is a hulking presence on the battlefield and starts spawning around difficulty 5. By the time you reach difficulty 7, 8, and 9, however, these enemies are a constant threat and you absolutely need to know how to handle them. Bile Titans have two attacks, an AoE Stomp that will one-shot any Helldiver, and a Bile Spew attack similar to that of the Bile Spewer enemy. If you're in range of either attack, you've pretty much already messed up because you never really want the Bile Titan to get anywhere close to you. Stick and move, that's the name of the game because it takes an incredible amount of firepower to bring these down. Small Arms is pretty much not effective as the only place you can deal damage to the Bile Titan is by hitting the sacks on the underside of its body, which is challenging when trying to keep your distance. Popping these sacks will deal instances of high damage to the overall health pool, so keep that in mind if you need just a bit more damage to finish one off. Instead, you'll want to opt for stratagems that deal massive amounts of damage. The Eagle 500kg bomb is a great example, but other stratagems like the Orbital Rail Cannon and even the Orbital Laser are okay. You can also rely on things like the Auto Cannon Sentry and Rocket Sentry, but this only works well in conjunction with other weapons and only if they're protected. If you're a soldier with access to the Railgun or Recoilless Rifle, you'll want to land as many shots on the Bile Titan's head as possible. It's truly a team effort to take down one of these massive foes, and oftentimes it's a symphony of attacks that gets the job done. It takes immense coordination, something we talk about in our Helldivers 2 Mistakes to Avoid video, so definitely check that out if you're about to jump into some of the harder difficulties in the game. With enough firepower, a lot of coordination, and a little luck, you can take down these massive bugs and hopefully live to fight another day. Bile Titans receive a 10 out of 10 on our Freedom Fighter Fatality Index. So there you have it, every enemy in the Terminid army and how to defeat them the most effective way. Hopefully you found this video helpful, but if we missed something, don't be shy. Leave us a comment down below and help us spread that glorious democracy to the rest of the community. Also, be sure to keep an eye on the channel because we have another video breaking down the Automaton army coming very soon. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.